Hi, welcome to the All Things LGBTQ interview show, where we interview LGBTQ guests who are making important contributions to our communities. All Things LGBTQ is taped at Orca Media in Montpelier, Vermont, which we recognize as being unceded indigenous land. Thanks for joining us and enjoy the show. As I've already shared with today's guest, I can't believe that it's already been a year since Pride in Bloom happened mm -hmm. in Bethel. Yeah. And they had such a good time that this year they're coming back for Carnival. Mm -hmm. So please <laughs> welcome back to All Things LGBTQ, Leonard Meek. Welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you very oh, much. Nice to be here. I, I am, was so excited to see that Bethel was doing a Pride Festival this year. Yeah. But I've got to say, I was also surprised that in the month of June alone, there are 12 Pride Festivals happening throughout Vermont, it, which is amazing. So, okay, Leonard, if I'm only gonna to go to one event, why should it be Carnival? And I understand that you're starting off on Thursday, June 22nd with a gay trivia contest? Yes, we are. So why should it be Carnival? Why not? <laughs> why not? Well, you know, we're here in this small town. We're really, it's a really good supportive community. Um, the interesting thing about us doing this is that we have not just queer people working on this carnival. It's a whole mishmash of people working on this carnival. So it's about community, inclusivity, equality for everybody, you know, and we, and we gear a lot, we try to gear a lot of the events, well, not a lot, but some of the events towards queer youth. And the reason for that is one of the things I've always noticed is that when pride celebrations happen, they happen for 18 and older. That's true. They happen That's for very 18 true. and older. Um, and in this town, we want it to happen for everybody. Everybody. Queer, queer supportive. If you're not queer supportive, come anyway. Get supportive. Um, we'll support you back. Um, that's what this is about. And it's about just having safe, inclusive fun. So I really like that there's a focus on youth and multi-generational yeah. and a full community involvement. Yeah, that's or, or my question is, if you don't do that, it doesn't work. Um, it, it, for me, it, you know, my understanding is it doesn't work. You cannot want people to just let people be if they don't interact with each other. So our goal is to get them all together and interact and just, and just be, just be. Whatever level that is for you, just be. But be that in joy, in peace, in support, um, in understanding, um, and you don't have to agree, but understand, understand each other, understand that this is this person's life and this is the other person's life and just enjoy what they're bringing to the world. That's it. And, that's, and that's how you truly build community and break exactly. down barriers and, and exactly. challenge all of that misinformation Precisely. that is so prevalent right now. Precisely. So it, is gay trivia going to ask some questions about or or do you know what the I don't know what the are. questions are but our tagline is anyone can play but it's going to be gay so everything centers around queer history uh everything queer history queer queer past present and future <laughs> and fantasy so it all centers around that and it's so much fun um oh. It's I can world. imagine because on each episode of All Things LGBTQ, we have been adding a trivia question uh -huh. because there's so much of our history that yeah. even 
we don't know because it had never been shared yeah. with us. Yeah. So this is, you know, this is wonderful. It's everything from they give name the flag, name the different gay flags and the pride flags, all of that. You know, and some people can get them, some people can't. Half of them, I more than half of them, I don't know. <laughs> you know, so, you know, I'm from it, the old school. One gay flag. <laughs> it's going to be a learning experience. It, it is. It for, was for last year. You know, and everything. You know, they gay trivia, gay history, um, and it covers the spectrum of like gay life, and um, and it's wonderful. You know, it, it, it's wonderful. It's fun. It's learning. Um, and it brings the community together. And it also, there's a lot of straight people that know more than we know about gay history. <laughs> okay, and this, is, and this is from 7 to 9 p.m. at Babes. At Babes. At Babes. Yes, it is. So, so I may finally get that, that Chicago dog. Yes, absolutely. That'll be available <laughs> as well. That, and they're good. <laughs> so, yeah. so then on Friday uh -huh. is the mass. Queer Aid yes. Ball. Yes. Oh, definitely tell me about this. Well, this is a celebration of, really it's a celebration of everybody, but I gear, in my mind for me, I gear more towards the youth. I gear towards, as we discussed a little earlier, those people who were ostracized for whatever reasons from their proms because they weren't allowed to be themselves. Um, so if you want to come in full regalia and something flowing and some feathers. And this year you want to wear a mask and feathers. You can wear it all because it's a masquerade. So we want you to come in all. We're going to have a mask making station just in case. Um, there's going to be a, a backdrop of a masquerade. There's going to be, it's going to be food, everything. We have, you don't, all you have to do is show up. There's going to be music, food, good times. Again, safe, fun environment. Um, queer, non-queer, whatever you, whatever you consider yourself, come, come dressed, come as a masquerade. I don't, and if that dress is just an eye patch, come dressed, <laughs> um, put some feathers on that patch, um, and just come to enjoy, come to enjoy and to communicate and to relax and to just mingle and to party with you and I and we want the youth to be there like I said before you know I'm really interested in making sure that gay youth are recognized in pride yes. because they're often left out of the celebrations um the celebrations are really geared towards you know for lack of better things to say 18 and above you know the parties happen at night they happen in bars they happen this is alcohol free you know so the party's happening for all ages, so parents can come with their kids who are gender, whatever, whatever you consider yourself, parents can come, bring the whole family, just come, just come and celebrate with us, that's it. It's a celebration of pride in general, and everybody should have pride, whether you consider yourself gay, straight, trans, this or that, everybody deserves to have pride and support, and that's what this is for. And this is at the White Church. At the White Church in Bethel on Church Street in Bethel. Yes. From six until eight p.m. There will be All flags right. hanging outside. Yes, and it may go a little longer. There will be flags hanging outside. You will know where to go. Um, you will see the flags flipping in the wind, hopefully, and you will know where to go. There will be people there to guide you. There'll be, you know, everyone will be there, ready, hoping for more. The more, the merrier. And and then on Saturday. Starting at noon, there is a family meeting. A family meeting. Um, that's this is really not my purview at all, but it's something we always do. Um, we have the family meeting is really they they try to gear it towards queer and queer youth and queer people in general. Um, a safe space to talk. A safe space to talk about what you what you're feeling, what's happening to you. Um, what you're feeling about what's going on in the world today, um, what you're feeling about what's happening in your little town or your home. It's a safe space. Um, understand that this meeting is not just happening just for pride. It happens regularly. So if you're interested, you want to reach out to the EIC, the Equity and Inclusion Committee, um, and you can find our website in Bethel, and you just want to 
go there and say, hey, I want to show up, and you can just show up. You know, they Equity provide- and Inclusion Committee is a committee of the town of Bethel. The town of Bethel. Well, anybody can be on this committee. You don't have to be from Bethel, but it's founded in Sponsor. Bethel. Um, it's sponsored in Bethel. Um, we are officially, the select board has officially, it's official. Um, so we do report to the select board and let them know what's going on and bring them in. Um, <clears throat> they're the ones who are also hosting the, like I told you, the book club. So if you want to join the book club, you can call, you can register, you, they'll give you a free book, you can read it and join in, um, things like that. As a former select board member, it's, it's always good to know what's happening in your backyard. Yes, yes it, is. it is. And we want them, you know, we want them included in gay pride and everything. You know, we want them included. So, and then starting at one o'clock is the Pride picnic at the recreation yeah. center. Yeah, this is this is this is just about some outdoor, some outdoor prideful fun. Um, we're going to supply everything from a bounce gym to food to music. They're going. There's a skateboard area for skateboarding. There is a jungle gym over there. We're going to have. I'm trying to get somebody to do face painting. Um, we're going to, try, I'm going to, you know, put little games out, hula hoops and this and that. Just come just to, just to romp around, bring your blankets, sit out on the grass, enjoy. Um, we're asking people if you want to bring, a, we can, we're going to do a potluck too. So local people can bring something to share, food to share. Um, again, all of these events are about pride, safety, inclusion, equality and peacefulness all of it and and then there's the event that just caught my eye the Drag. the parasol oh, promenade at yes. four I, okay descri describe it the parasol promenade my vision we've never done this before my vision is that you'll see a parade on a parade of people casually walking with multicolored umbrellas celebrating their pride and who they are. Talking, walking, laughing, just for about 30 to 40 minutes, just walking through the streets of Bethel, downtown Bethel, um, and just holding up your umbrellas just to say, we're queer, we're straight, we're whatever, here we are. We're not going anywhere. We love being here. The world is going to love us. The world does love us. They just don't know it yet. <laughs> um, and that's that, you know, that's that. It's just like that. I just envision, just like when you look from the top of the sky, you just see these beautiful colored parasols walking. It's moving, it's floating down the sidewalk and floating around Bethel and people going, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, from the sidelines. That's we're, right. we're, we're going to give you the opportunity to appreciate exactly, exactly how fabulous we are. And we also give them the opportunity to say, hey, can I join you? Come on, get under the umbrella. You know? And then at seven o'clock, Emoji Nightmare yes. is going to be emceeing the drag show. Yes. Uh, drag shows are important, they always have been, and they always will be. And given what's going on in this country, Drag performers need to know that we all are there for them, that we understand what they're doing. It is one of the best forms of comedy I've ever, ever witnessed. Um, these people always bear their all when they perform. Um, they always have a message. They always have something fun to give you. And they want you just to be, and they want you just to enjoy life, you know? And that's what they, that's every drag shop I've ever been, I've left on a higher note. And I've been to several, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, and I've left on a higher note of joy and for lack of better term, joy, love, peace, you know, and wrapping everybody up in your arms. It's just about good fun, you know, heartfelt fun. They're not, you know, and how could we not have a drag show? Exactly. Okay, where's the venue for the drag show? The White Church. Oh! <laughs> and then following that is the dance party starting yeah. at 10? 
it's going to fold, it's going to slide right into the dance party right there. So you come to one place and you get it all. And you, I noticed on the poster it said tickets were available at door. You did not order them online in advance. Well, the thing, the thing is, we did that last year and it limited what we could do. It limited the amount of people. It was, I mean, we had, we sold out in weeks and like we put it out there in like two and a half weeks, we were sold out. So people had the waiting list and the other. Now we moved to the Y Church that has a larger capacity. So we can have more people there. Um, and we figured, let's not sell tickets. Just come on in. We're asking that the minimum donation is $15, but we're asking you to give more than that if you can. If not, $15 is welcome. And again, all of the ticket sale proceeds go to the performance. We get none of it. We don't use any of it for anything else except for them. It's how we want to do. We want them. We want you to come to support them so they can get paid. <laughs> well, exactly. And, and I've got to say that the performers probably appreciate the support you're giving them. Okay. The money is going to the performers. And before we started taping, you were sharing that mm -hmm. you haven't done traditional fundraising necessarily to put the carnival together. You have looked for community donations, community yes. support yes. in addition to doing a fundraising event. Could you talk mm -hmm. a little bit about how that's happened? Well, the whole, initially, even last year, the whole idea of the Pride Fest for me was to rally the community together. Um, so what better way to do that than to seek community support from local organizations? And those local organizations came through. They came through, they donated what they could. They did not hesitate. They said, here, here, here. This year, we actually did basket bingo a uh, local fundraiser, a raffle fundraiser for it. And we wanted to involve, and we wanted to keep it local and do it locally and see all of the businesses contributed, even outside of Bethel, the Woodstock Inn contributed, you know, all of them contributed some kind of gifts so that we could raffle off. And that's what it's about. This is not, you know, this is yes happening in Bethel, but the surrounding, surrounding communities are also welcomed here. So, Bethel may be small, but we have a big open heart and a big open space. Come and join us. You know, and, um, we want them here. You know, we want everybody to come and join in. And now, that's you should, an answer to your other question. That's why you should come to Carnival. <laughs> <laughs> now, you had also made a reference to, you know, that there is a book group that's meeting and the family meetings mm -hmm. content, continue throughout mm -hmm. the year. You know, if, if I were interested in participating in those events, I would see them listed on the diversity and inclusion yes. website yeah. or yes. they, website yeah. or both. Bethel EIC. So it's Bethel's Equity and Inclusion Committee. Okay. Um, and you'll see you'll see it. Um, just make sure it's Bethel, Vermont, not Bethel, Connecticut, because that comes up sometimes when you do that. Um, give me a second. Um Unfortunately, I don't go on the website as often because I'm always at the meetings. Um, so no, you you can send me the I'll website send you the I'll send you the and then we'll have it displayed yeah. during the interview. Perfect, perfect. Oh, um, yeah, I will do that. Yeah, um, because the EIC committee is instrumental in really moving this town forward. Um, you know, I've you know I've been talking about doing something for Pride for years. And when Owen got here from Babes, we were talking about it. And then finally, we just started doing it. Um, and this is our second annual, and we hope to have our 50th annual someday. Um, so we're going to be working on this and doing this every year. And we hope they get bigger and bigger and bigger and more people flock, want to flock to Bethel to witness, to be a part of, to support, to volunteer, all of it. All you had met, you had mentioned prior to our starting taping that you were working on trying to establish a BIPOC committee. Yes, or a, we're, BIPOC, or a BIPOC group that would be meeting in that. An affinity, a BIPOC affinity group. Yes, we are. Um, we had one meeting. Um, it was sparsely attended. So we, um, but we did some. We went to school. Dana, who's also Dana Depp, who's also working with me on this. Um, went to went and did some things in the school. So she's sort of gathering more of the youth 
Um, Cause that's what we really want. We want young people to know that they have a place to go here um, on all sides. You know, we want you to know that you have a place. And I think people get the wrong idea when you talk about BIPOC affinity and all of that. This is not a place to gripe into the, this is a place of positivity, of growth and positivity of if you're going through something, how do you turn that into something positive and big for you, yourself, and the world? And that's what it's about. Um, and that's what we put forth in these groups. Um, you know, every, you know, everything that you do, you have, you have, you have everything that happens to you and that you do, you have an opportunity to go one way or the other. You know, um, one way can be really positive and one way can be detrimental to you because you, you wallow in that negativity um, or you wallow in the meanness of it. Take that meanness and turn it around. What, what did you learn from that? Move forward with that. You know, so that's where those groups are for me when I help run those groups, so. It's how, how can Bethel become your home and a home that you want to come back to and where you want to stay. And with that, I need to say thank you for spending this time with us. Thank you. <laughs> good, good, good luck with Carnival. Thank you. And, and I'm still thinking I, I at least now need to sneak down and take pictures of the promenade. Oh yeah, please do. <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going tonight over there, we're gonna, we're getting, I'm going over there in a little while to look at the space so we can form, formalize how we're decorating it and all that and get the parasol painting station set up and stuff like that. So, yeah. Okay. So starting Thursday, June 22nd, yes. Bethel is June your destination 20th. of choice. Drive through the park and come on in June 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. And don't drive through. Make this your destination. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so. All right. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Keith. Hi, everybody on LGBTQ, all this LGBTQ. We'd like to want to welcome Shalonda J. James to our show. Hello, Hello everyone. everyone. Yeah. How's everyone so, doing? Well, we hope everybody's doing the sun's out today, which is a small miracle. Um, <laughs> Yolanda is assistant chef manager at the Montpelier Senior Activity Center. She does a lot of fabulous cooking and organizing cooking and um, gives wonderful meals all the time. So we'd like to thank you for that, Yolanda. That's really a, a gift. Um, so I heard from talking to you a little earlier that you are from originally from South Carolina. I went to school in North Carolina, and and uh, and how did you end up in lovely Vermont? Well, I ended up in Vermont because I always wanted to travel and be able to experience different places with culinary. One of the reasons why I got in this field is because you can always travel, and somebody's always going to need to eat someplace. So, therefore. I figured that was the best way to be, be able to do those two things that I love. So I ended up in Vermont um, through a friend who I had um, previously worked in Alaska with, and he invited me up to Vermont to work up here. And I had heard lots of good things about farm to table and all this wonderful culinary, you know, nuance that was going on. And I thought that, hey, maybe I'd like to go and experience that and see what that was all about. So how long have you been here now? Uh, I think I've been here almost 10 years now. Okay. <laughs> How long have you been working at the senior center? Um, I think I'm going on three years now. I know when I when you first started, I said, "This woman is from the south because she really can cook." <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had spent like 17 years in, and um, you know, I, I just miss that cooking so much. I miss the food. <laughs> But exactly. uh, you gave us a taste of it. 
so, um, so what do you do? What's your day like? Or when you're here and you're planning meals, do you plan out for a week or uh, typically, I have to plan a month in advance, which I just got through doing June's menu today, uh, because we want to make sure that we're able to send it off to dietitians that collaborate with us and make sure that we're meeting the nutritional guidelines for our program so that we can receive proper funding. And so basically, um, once I get in, you know, to work on a daily basis, we're going by the menu that I've already um, turned in and been approved. And so we might make a few adjustments to it, but for the most part, we try to follow that um, menu. And so we also um, adjust just by donations that we are given through Community Harvest, Food Bank, or any other um, donations that we receive just from local people. Oh. And and what are the, is there like special dietary? Uh, is that hard to kind of meet with the dietary requirements, like how much vegetable, how much protein, uh, all of that? So is that oh, kind yeah. of hard to work out? And... Well, it is sometimes. Um, I think the most difficult one to manage sometimes can be diabetic or gluten free because we have like certain grain requirements. And so because of those grain requirements, you have to figure out more grains that are less likely to have as much starch so that it's more um, accessible for the diabetic. Um, so grains like quinoa or starches like sweet potatoes, things of that nature where it has a deuce or less um, starch con uh, content or a more complex content so that it's broken down a little bit differently in the body than what would normally be. So, so not, not only do you have to do just for what is healthy by standards, but also for diabetics too. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Um, do you also do meals on meals or is that another project so we do meals on wheels is what our program is and we provide um meals for people who are over the age of 65 that can no longer um either themselves be able to cook or have less mobility and can't get out and go and get food and be able to cook the food that they need for nutritional purposes and so by that way, we are able to deliver a meal to them and make sure that they're getting that nutritional value of what they need on a daily basis. And you have volunteers that drive people, that drive the food around to different. Our, our whole program is pretty much volunteer based. Uh, we are volunteer based through our drivers, through our kitchen workers, um, through our farm. We have a farm in which the parks and recs run and have volunteers bring donations um, from the farm to us in order for us to process and be able to use in our meals. So you have a lot of responsibility there yeah. because the food, for, the food for Meals for Wheels is often different than the food that you do like for Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, Thurs Tuesdays and Fridays that people drive or come from, they're like totally different, right? Yeah, right. So, but we've recently dismantled curbside because it was a part of a program that was through COVID. So now that we've dismantled that, we now have community meals on Thursdays in which people can come from, in, from 12 to one and be able to have an in-person meal with us. I know that I really miss that. I went to my, I went to my first one yesterday, as a matter of fact, and yeah. you know, it's really nice to see some faces I haven't seen since the pandemic started. So uh, that was really nice, and you know, I think people really miss getting together. 
It is it's definitely more than just a meal. As it says, we have that social aspect that we deliver when we go and we check on our clientele and make sure that they're doing okay and just have, you know, conversation with them and just tell them what's going out in the world and things of that nature. So, yeah, yeah. it's a really great job. Yeah, they, the drivers really tend to bond with our clientele and, you know, they love, you know, going and seeing about them and, and having those moments with them. And it might be the only person they see during the day at all. That is correct. Yeah, so, so it's a great service and we're glad you came. Um, did you work in a restaurant you recently started at the center or? When I first came to Stowe, I was in the resort world. And so one of the first resorts that I was working at was Stowe Flake. And so I worked there for about a year. And then I also worked at Trap Family Lodge for about three years. So uh, never made it to Stowe Mountain, but they were, they, they were trying to get me. <laughs> I know a lot of good friends there, though. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for doing this and for being part of the community and helping. And, um, you know, it, it is really an incredible service. And it's like one that's behind the scenes that, you know, you don't get enough credit for. And uh, it's, it's a really valuable service. And I know seniors who just wait, you know, for their driver to come and, um, you know, just Pay attention and listen for even for five minutes or two minutes. Um, so it's a great service. And so one, one last question is, when you decide that you have to be, um, you know, you have to be very too like chicken, you know. Yeah, the variety <laughs> that I try to give when I am making my menus so that, you know, people don't get bored. Plus, you know, also being able to offer favorites like shepherd's pie or either like, um, what is it, Yankee pot roast is one of those favorites that we love to do here. Yeah. And uh, uh, macaroni and cheese. <laughs> So definitely try to get those favorites in there. But then we like to offer things that something that somebody might not have ever tried before, like for soup, you know, or yeah. either having, you know, making sure that we're showing support in what's going on around the world, you know. Yep, and a little spice that okay. once in a while yeah. that might be a little different. Yes, definitely so. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much for what you do. Thank you for being on the show. And um, I, I see you in the drive, so I'll be seeing you in the driveway. All right. That sounds great. Thank, thank you. you. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us. And until next time, remember, resist. <laughs>